Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in signals and systems. In today's tutorial, we'll talk about the basics of initial and final value theorems. And we'll talk about these theorems in context to the Laplace transform. Now, if we talk about initial and final values of um, a function or a signal, uh, the definition is pretty elementary. Let us say we have a signal which is e raised to power minus a t which is a uh, decaying exponential. So the initial value of this signal will be the value of the signal or the system at time t is equal to 0 plus because the concept of negative time is non-existent so we start our uh, signal from time t is equal to 0 plus so that value of the signal at 0 plus time will be the initial value of the signal and the final value will happen or will be obtained at time t is equal to infinity now in time domain it is very very easy to understand uh, this definition that what will be the initial value and what will be the final value and if we draw uh, this uh, these two functions e raised to power minus a t is a decaying exponential and e raised to power a t is a rising exponential we know that at time t is equal to 0 its value is 1 because e raised to power 0 is 1 and again at mm, time t is equal to 0 the value will be 1 for e raised to power a t and e raised to power minus a t for both so initial value of these two functions in time domain is pretty easy to calculate we simply put x of 0 or we simply find out x of 0 so we put uh, t is equal to 0 e raised to power 0 becomes 1 so that becomes easy to find out and similarly the final value also becomes very very easy to obtain which is obtained by putting t is equal to infinity and we get a minus infinity which is 0 and we get an infinity which is infinity so we know that this rising exponential will have a value of infinity at time infinity and this decaying exponential e raised to power minus a t will have a value of 0 at time t is equal to infinity. So, but at times it is not really possible to calculate the initial and final values of the uh, function because because of the complexity of the equation. If the equation is really complex, we, we might not be able to find that by substituting t is equal to zero or t is equal to infinity in time domain. So that is where the initial and final value theorems come into picture for Laplace transform. We'll not go into the derivation of this because we know that according to initial value theorem, uh, the initial value of any function can be found out using uh, this formula so if the Laplace transform of a function is x of s then by putting the limit s uh, approaching infinity s into x of s will give me the initial value of the function so will now this formula is known to most of you but there are some some very important key points that we need to remember while applying this formula uh, to Laplace transformed functions and that is what we are going to discuss here so if we were to find out the initial value of this simple function e raised to power minus a t u t we know the Laplace transform of this function is 1 upon s plus a and if we apply this initial value theorem s into x of s and we uh, put the limit approaching infinity will get uh, the value 1 so please understand that uh, mm, s upon s plus a taking s common from the denominator and putting the limit infinity here 
we get a when, uh, 1 and we also know that the initial value of this function at time t is equal to 0 was 1 and this theorem holds true for the initial value and now let's examine this same theorem for uh, this rising exponential function over here the Laplace transform of this function is 1 upon s minus a and if I apply the same theorem initial value theorem s approaching infinity s of excess uh, again by taking s common so this goes away we are left with 1 upon 1 minus 0 it gives me a 1 and we saw that uh, this rising exponential also has um, the initial value as at t is equal to 0 we have the initial value as 1 so this answer is also correct now what about the final value theorem according to the final value theorem uh, how do we find that out the final value is obtained by putting limit s approaching 0 s of x of s so this formula is again very very popular but what if we try to apply this to a function like e raised to power minus a t u of t uh, we know the Laplace transform of this function is 1 upon s plus a so if we were to find out the final value of this we can simply uh, use this formula so limit s approaching 0 now s upon s plus a so we have 0 upon a which is 0 and we know that the Laplace of uh, e raised to power minus a t u t which is s plus a and in time domain because this is a decaying exponential it will reach a value 0 so over here also the the final value theorem holds true but this is where uh, uh, something strange happens the Laplace transform of e raised to power at is 1 upon s minus a so if I put the final value theorem by putting limit s approaching 0 s upon s minus a I get a 0 but we know that uh, for a rising exponential which is this one the final value is not 0 in fact it is infinity so over here our final value theorem is not holding true over here we get a get an incorrect result so why does that happen so here comes the most important point uh, please understand that if we talk about e raised to a minus a t function whose Laplace transform is 1 upon s plus a so uh, the pole here is s is equal to minus a we get a pole at minus a now because this is e raised to a minus a t u of t uh, the Laplace transform of e raised to a minus a t u of t is 1 upon s plus a the ROC of this system because the system is causal it will be um, real s greater than minus a so when when I draw real s minus a the ROC is towards this side this entire plane is the region of convergence so 0 falls into uh, the range of ROC now s is equal to 0 is a valid point in the region of convergence therefore uh, when we put the limit s is equal to 0 it it surely uh, falls into the valid region where it is um, we are able to calculate it so that is why we get a correct answer but over here in the second case if we look into the second case the pole comes out to be at s is equal to a which means that our region of convergence is towards the right hand side of a because it is causal again this is the Laplace transform of e raised to power a t u t uh, the Laplace transform of e raised to power a t u t is 1 upon s minus a the pole comes out at a so the region of convergence is real of s greater than a so 0 s is equal to 0 
does not fall into the region of convergence area so what we have here is s is equal to 0 is not a valid point in roc therefore the result that we get is incorrect so that's the key point that you need to remember that whenever you put the limit s is equal to 0 or s is equal to infinity as a matter of fact in e initial or final value theorems you must also see that uh, 0 or infinity they must lie in the region of convergence yeah, in the examples uh, previously where we found um, the initial value theorem s is equal to infinity was a valid point in the region of convergence of this uh, function because uh, our ROC was the area on the right so infinity is also a point there uh, in fact uh, ROC is the most important condition uh, bef that we need to check before we can apply initial and final value theorems on Laplace transformed functions and if you have any doubts about ROC finding ROCs of causal anti-causal or non-causal systems finding the stability from ROC then you can watch uh, the video whose link uh, is found on the cards and also in the uh, description area so just watch that video for more clarity on ROC because initial and final value theorem will give you uh, accurate results only when ROC is checked so uh, I hope this a quick tutorial on the introduction of initial and final value theorems and its requirements is of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel I'll see you around. Take care. Bye.